What is up everyone? This is Levi Spade. Welcome to the Levi Spade Show. So excited to be here with you, learning so much more about stocks and investing. Right now I'm cooped up, having a cup of coffee. This is the week of March 27th. It was an incredible week. One of the largest gains in the stock market since 1930s. As I was sitting around, the question that I had was, what is averaging down? At first, it did not make sense. Why buy more stocks when prices are lower? Is it used by other professionals? Let's explore this more together. Then we will not make the same mistakes as others in the past. So I looked up the definition for averaging down. Sounds technical, doesn't it? Averaging down is an investing strategy where you buy additional shares from an existing investment that you have made. And what it does is it lowers the overall cost basis for those shares. But you have to be prepared to buy and hold this. After reading that, I began thinking, why not? It should be a no-brainer. I'm always saying buy low sell high or should I stay away from it altogether hmm well here's some things that I think are important it's best for long-term investors if you're thinking about buying a stock and then selling it in a couple days or weeks then it's not for you you should be looking at weekly and monthly charts Plan to hold the shares as if you're going to be staying at a job for as long as possible. Make sure to include it with a strategy, a sound trade strategy. And what it would look like is buying one or two shares consistently and not doubling down. That is just way too risky. Great investors, they just take a portion of what they make and they consistently just contribute a little bit to all of their other investments slowly. They're not doubling down. Bull trend stocks are a good place to start as there is a proven record that means not buying penny stocks, options, or derivatives that are extremely risky and you could stand to lose a lot if the markets turn the other way. Remember, no one knows what the markets are going to do a day, a week, or a month from now. So don't try to do it yourself. Because there is no magic crystal ball. So here are some warnings that I came up for myself and hopefully for others. When you're thinking about averaging down, it exposes you to more risk if the investment declines further. See, many investors, they make emotional trades and they forget about their trade strategy and end up making huge mistakes. If risk management isn't followed when investing, it could hurt your portfolio in the long term. Here is an example that I wanted to show you for how a trade strategy could look uh, at a very basic level. Just using one indicator, the RSI, the Relative Strength Indicator. This is probably the most common indicator people use and it goes from 0 to 100 and a lot of investors they include this on their stock charts and the number 30 is a very important number along with 70 now usually but not always an RSI when it gets to be around the 30 range investors know it's going to go back up it means that it's been oversold and that people are going to begin investing in it again I have these green arrows on the chart for you so you can see these are the times when the RSI dip to around 30 or 40. And then at those peaks of the stock price, you can be assured that the RSI reached to about 70 or 80. So here's an example of another trade strategy investors might employ or use with another indicator such as the RSI. So here's a stock chart of Facebook at a five-year duration. I have put the indicator of a simple moving average. Investors like to just use the acronym SMA. Now that blue line on the chart you see is the stock price. And it's very jagged. It goes up and it goes down. 
but Facebook, you can see that overall, you could draw a straight line from the lowest price at the left to the highest on the right, a very clear upward trend. Bold trend investors probably have this in their portfolio because it's seen so much growth and it's so popular with everyone. Now, someone who's using the averaging down would probably have bought the stock when the stock price gets near the SMA. So it's just a very good indicator and a guide to when they would actually buy when using the averaging down strategy. So here's the chart for GE and I'm just using it as an example. I have no idea if GE is going to go continue to go down or to go up here in the next couple of years. But those red arrows are when investors could have potentially bought into GE thinking it's temporarily down. But then in 2010, it went down majorly again. So here it would have developed a downward trend because of the time period in around 2000. Uh, it was higher at that point. And then and again in 2019, it dipped down to about the same stock price. So here you got into a trap where you were buy thinking you're buying at a good price, but now you're going to have to wait for many, many more years, possibly decades for the stock price to recover. I wanted to just show you really quickly a comparison and the difference it makes for percentage wise on your return on your investment. So on the left, I show you here, if you had bought a stock at say $10, and it went up to 20 and then you had seen it went back down to $8, then that would have equated to about $9 per the two shares that you bought. And then say the price went up to $27, that would have been a 300% gain. Pretty good using the averaging down strategy versus investors who would have bought the stock at $20, seen the stock price go up to $20, bought it then, their stock price would have gone down to $8 and then gone up to $27. If they had sold that stock, then the shares would have been at $15 on average for the two and you would have made a 55% gain overall, a lot less than the 300%. This is the power of averaging down and what's possible. Obviously, nobody can call the bottoms or the highs of a stock. I just use this as a comparison example. Averaging down is a strategy that people do know about. A book was even written about it and now other people create articles about it and uh, talk about it in their groups and on social media. Some of the insights that I gained from the research that I did with averaging down is I want to make sure that anybody who does the averaging down carefully researches the stock first. There's the area of a stock called fundamentals. And to give you a better idea, that just relates to revenue. Is it increasing each year? Their debt, is it high? Are they going to have trouble in the future? Ask yourself, does it diversify your portfolio? Are you going to put all your money on one number or spread it out knowing there's going to be multiple stocks that return thousands of percent? Look at the price trend. Make sure it is strong. If you were to draw a line on the chart, is it going to touch the bottoms and the highs? Not quite sure where to start when averaging down? Look for bull trend patterns or ones that have recently broken out of a downward trend. There's a reason why it's broken out. Maybe there's new management or they've come up with a breakthrough product. And also during this time with virus and the global events that are happening, you want to make sure you have a very strong investment plan. You don't want to be making emotional decisions right now and reacting to what's going on. So stick to your regular schedule of investing and put some of your money towards a portfolio of whatever it could be, an IRA or your 401k, an ETF, something like that. Impulse investing is not advised. There's so many flashy things out there such as Bitcoin and options and derivatives, margin investing. 
These are all high risk. If the markets go the other way, you stand to lose a lot of money. So be very careful. Use the planned amount of money each week to invest in stocks. You have made profits overall. Take a deep breath before investing. Never feel rushed with your investment decisions. Buying a business should be exciting and rewarding. Great businesses last for years, despite the ups and downs of the economy. Well, thank you guys very much for watching this video. Hope you learned something. I know I sure did. Be sure to like this video if you got something from it. Subscribe to my channel. I'm always looking for other investors and helping others with their financial journey. And hit that bell icon if you want to see the videos I upload right away. I'll see you guys in the next video.